Hello everybody, my name is Jared Bendis and I am here to talk to you about CES 2021. Now this is really my CES coda. I've already done 10 episodes covering everything that I've already seen at CES. However, for some of you, this is an episode 11, this is episode 1. Let me explain. So my producer at uh, uh, w WCPN was like, hey, did you see the Wired article where they went through everything? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, you know what? I love Wired Magazine. Matter of fact, I love everybody who covers tech. I think it's a great field to be in. So I was thinking to myself, since most of my videos are me just kind of randomly going through things and um, saying my opinions on it, I thought, why don't I use the Wired list of 79 gadgets and glimpses in the future and see what my take is on what they've done. So I want to first I want to thank Wired Magazine. I love Wired Magazine. I'm not trying to dump on what you've selected because you've selected what you've selected and now I'm going to dump on them. So let's kind of go through and see what I think of what Wired says is the highlights of CES 2021. Now I haven't looked at this. I, I, I have not. I glimpsed for like a second, but I have no real idea of what's on their list. I already know what I've gone through. I've done 10 episodes of Wired of, uh, of CES, but we'll see what happens. So let's go through and see what we've got. Uh, so let's take a look at what they are thinking is the cool things. Lasso will actually recycle your recycling. Now this is actually one of the reasons why I'm actually doing this because my producer was like, what do you think of Lasso? And I hadn't looked at it and I hadn't seen this. So uh, there's this idea about what happens with our recycling. Recycling is a really big problem. I'm in Cleveland where it turns out we don't recycle our recycling anymore. It's such an embarrassing thing. It all goes to the same place because they couldn't find anyone who would do our recycling because it's really, really uh, difficult. Uh, so the idea is, is it steams them clean and sorts the garbage and then tells you what to do with them. Now that's actually uh, pretty cool. Actually, they, they pick it up for you. Um, so that's pretty neat. Now, what I like about products like this is that they they seem like it's technology, but the technology is secondary to the social engineering. Social engineering is really the, the technology that's going on here. You bought this machine, they're cleaning your garbage, they're telling you, they're getting you to be a better behavior person. Uh, back when I was an undergrad in college, I had a friend who sorted everything, and he sorted all the recyclables, whether we got money for it or not. And he taught everybody in my fraternity house to, to understand the full range of recycling. And that really is a level of dedication. And technology like this is really catered to those people who want to do it and make it a little less gross. But look at that. They're tied to a company that actually, you know, will make sure the stuff gets the right place. So that's pretty cool. Now, would you buy it? And the answer for me is, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm not there. All right. Sex tech. Sex toys can simulate you to the beat of any song. You know, there, there is an interesting thing when it comes to a lot of these types of, of, of sexual wellness devices. And I think some of them are amazing. The question, of course, is, is, is this a needed item? Uh, a friend of mine, a uh, really brilliant guy, uh, wired his windshield wipers to actually wipe his uh his windshield to the beat of any song that's not a good idea i mean it was brilliant don't get me wrong it's really really cool but you'd have to find the right song uh in the right rainstorm so i i love this type of stuff i think some of the things we're looking for is more gimmicky i'm much more interested in the ones that really use the biofeedback mechanisms where they do what needs to be done the way it needs to be done. Uh, so yeah, so this one is an air pulse sex toy, which is actually pretty cool because it's not just vibration and the air pulse stuff is, is really neat because you're actually seeing people thinking about, remember people have been using uh, vibration type, you know, uh, stimulation since the 1800s, if not earlier. So there you go. All right. And then of course it's only 50 bucks. That's pretty good. Uh, pocket talk. Updated translator for the COVID world. Now, when it comes to Pocket Talk, I think I have one. I think I actually have a Pocket Talk, and Pocket Talk is amazing. Uh, the Pocket Talk translator. I mean, you, you just you you talk and it talks and it's it just really really cool. These automatic translators are the bomb, and I have to say they're awesome. The fact that they've got um, they're using it in, in these because of COVID nineteen for first responders. That's pretty neat. Um, all right, let's keep going. Uh, air things can now analyze the risk of indoor virus spread. Mm. So I've been really, really uh, harsh on the virus tech. 
And I don't mean I'm harsh on it. I think it's great. I think it's really, really good. But there are so many companies out there that are like rushing to make a buck that I get worried when I see these things because I want to make sure that they really do what they're supposed to do. And again, they even mentioned in the, in the Wired article, unlike the rash of cleaning products meant to purify the air, that, that, that worries me because most of these things are like, look, we're s solving problems. And you're like, are you, are you really? Did you test it? Or are you just trying to get to market? Because uh, we'll buy anything right now. And that's the thing. So this is a, uh, what is it doing? It's, it's a, it's a subscription plan. Mm, love subscription plans. I understand people need a business model, and again, a subscription plan is a business model, but it analyzes the room for virus risks. Okay, so it doesn't detect the virus, but it looks to see the, 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 the factors, temperature, humidity. Okay, there you go. That's interesting. Um, and what I like about, I do like that as an interesting idea, but it's the same thing that goes with, like, I have um, the uh, infrared devices where they look for the heat you know that are in the rooms where it's not just some en enough to analyze the risks you actually have to do something once you've done that so it's a little bit it's a smart device but it's how you use that information that becomes important all right we've got telemedicine all right i'm all for telemedicine i'm all for telemedicine i think when you look at telemedicine you're looking at how technologies really make it so that the experts can be everywhere and it's great, especially in a world. It used to be telemedicine was like, let's get people, you know, across the world. And now it's just like, let's get people across the, the city, you know, because we don't want to go anywhere. So let's keep scrolling. All right. The Biopectal Opti BP app measures your blood pressure with your phone. I'm skeptical about most blood pressure machines that actually aren't the cuffs or whatever. I would have to look into this. I'm very... I mean, obviously, we, we know that blood pressure is a big deal, things like that. But I would really, really want to see uh, the results are faster and just as accurate as a blood pressure cuff. And they've been validated in peer review studies with regular approval slated for later this year. All right. If I'm looking at anything that's blood pressure related, I have been trained the regular the regulatory approval is what's needed. Because I was actually talking to one of the companies that, that makes a blood pressure cuff. And I go, is it any good? And their answer was, it has to be, because we can't sell it unless it's the same as everything else. So, you know, one blood pressure cuff is as good as another because the government pretty much has a baseline for it. So it's cool that they're doing this tech. I would love to see that it actually is 100%. And the other thing here is, is anything that's optical, I worry about, because sometimes, I'm not making any accusations about this one, but I've seen some optical devices work better on Caucasian people than non-Caucasian people. And it really is bad to have whites-only tech. And I don't know, no one ever means it that way, but you see a lot of that that comes into play when you're looking at certain medical technologies where they're only working with one group because they, they forgot to think about others. All right. Afraid of leaving your kid in a hot car? There's a device for that. It's called Commons. No, I understand it's a huge, huge problem. Uh, but uh, this is an interesting one. I... I, I'm really torn. I understand that this will save lives. I understand that a device that lets you know that your kid is still in the car uh, and that it's heating up and that your app is being there. But if you need this device, there's other problems as well. And I would hate to see that a device like this makes you lazier about it. And that's the thing that we run into with some any of these types of technologies is when does a technology desensitize you from the responsibilities that you're supposed to have? And this has, can happen in very simple ways. I mentioned in one of my other videos, within a week of have a month of having a DVR, I was trying to rewind live conversations because my brain is being told, when you're watching TV, don't pay full attention. You can always rewind, which is training my brain. Don't pay full attention. You can always rewind, which is not true. But again, pretty awesome. Um, I'm sure it's going to save lives. Uh, I, I think that that's cool. Um, and then there you go. So uh, it is a device that detects if you've left your baby in the car. <laughs> I shouldn't even have to say that. All right. Hide drugs from your kids in these Bluetooth unlocked boxes. All right. That's pretty cool. Um, so they're, they're Bluetooth boxes and they can be bolted to the ground. All right. That's pretty neat. I, I'm, I'm cool with that. I mean, it's a Bluetooth safe. That makes sense. Yeah, you know, what? who are you trying to lock things out of? That, that's pretty cool. Uh, a new way to help save the bees. Uh, Beings Bee Box. 
Oh, it's somebody's favorite thing from there. It's designed for the backyard beekeeper. Ooh, I literally get shivers when people talk about backyard beekeeping. I am not a backyard beekeeper. But that being said, you know, anything that encourages backyard beekeeping is a good thing. The more beekeepers we have, the better. The device is unique with the chimney for bees enter and exit. Um, wow. This that's pretty cool. So it's a, it's a smart beehive for the backyard beekeeper. I would I would be interested in learning more about that, but I'm going to scroll it down. Pop sockets get magnetic. Finally, finally. You know, I have uh, an iPhone and I've got a pop socket on the back and I can't use a MagSafe charger because it doesn't go through it. Now, last year, PopSocket invented a um, uh, a charger where that would that was uh, that you could put the pop socket phone onto it. This one, of course, uh, is just removable, and though that's pretty cool. Good for you, pop sockets. Um, hex Wi Fi will fill your home with Wi Fi waves. Um, is a unique way to detect intruders using Wi Fi. Um, it fills what the hell? It fills your space with Wi Fi waves that will, in theory, bend around a person walking through this area, alerting you to motion via notification your home okay that's that's bizarre all right that's pretty cool they say it's pet proof everyone says they're pet proof and then they meet my dog all right so that's that's uh, i'm gonna keep scrolling apple reveals the next step in its hundred million dollar pledge towards racial equity that is that is a cool trend but i am am here for consumer talk so i'm gonna keep going lg's latest 4k projector looks fantastic um, so the big companies, the LGs of the world and the Samsungs of the world and the Sonys of the world, they just kitchen and seek CES. And so you're like, oh, I, I almost, I usually end up missing it until it's at Best Buy. Uh, so they've got a 4K projector. That's cool. It will fill screens up to 300 inches uh, for a truly cinematic experience. I, I'm all for that. I think this is really cool. That being said, how often do I need a projector these days? You know, flat screen TVs are, are so cheap and big, and that's what I tend to do. The, the doggy doors tech makes me nervous. Um, I've seen a couple doggy door things this year. Um, maybe it's because I live in a city. Maybe it's because I'm afraid of squirrels. I'm not afraid of squirrels, but there are squirrels everywhere and I see them. So we're looking at here is the smart doggy door. I'm assuming uh, it will replace your exterior door at a dro and drop a cool $3,000. Oof, $3,000. That's a lot of money for a doggy door. And of course, there's a sensor on your dog and it does this. Now, here's the funny part about this is, is I at one point had um, a food dish that was wired to my cats. And so the cat could come up and eat and it would go up when the cat would do it. But when the cat would go up, the other ones would come in. So if you've got multiple animals, it's always pretty, pretty interesting. And so that's pretty cool. Um, th there is a discussion about obviously, you know, what the bad news with, with, with uh, any sort of dog door. I'm still sort of embracing that in terms of like, what if a bird flies in? What if a raccoon comes in? What if a dog, you know, what if well, somebody tries to, you know, come in with it? But uh, there you go. That's just my paranoia about it. Sony's got a drone. Well, that's crazy. Um, that That's crazy. Um, but there you go. Sony's got a drone. I, I don't I don't know what to say about that. Uh, Sony's a big company, and now they sell drones. Segway is making electric scooters for kids. <laughs> I, I, I just think about all the crazy jokes you made about Segways when they first came out, about you know people killing themselves, um, and now they're making kid scooters. I'm, I'm not a, a, a scooter person myself, so scooters always like freak me out. Uh, but that being said, you know people love their scooters. Um, I wish there was a. What do they have? They have. Um, uh, yeah, here we go. As a mom, I have to say these kids look like they're having the time of their lives. And I was like, they're one ill time sneeze away from visiting the emergency room. So, uh, Adrian, you and me, I agree. Uh, I would love to see what the price of this stuff is. And again, I, I go, it's great for kids. Whose kids? Not my kids. So there you go. Um, innovative new chairs. Uh, chair tech is a weird thing because whenever I am dealing with uh, chairs, at work there's always like 12 chairs and i sit in each one and whatever one i pick is the one that nobody wants so uh i think chair tech is fun thing but you know the way my ass fits in the chair is an opinion it's not an expert opinion so i move along all right gopro uh is bringing new features to old heroes congratulations to gopro so gopro has come out with a new firmware and i knew about this one they come out with a new firmware 
where basically they're adding features by using the accelerometer as trigger mechanisms in their other cameras. And I think that's a really fun thing. What ends up happening is, is that a lot of cameras out there, and matter of fact, I have one right here, not a GoPro, but another camera. Uh, so this is a, a years ago when Lytro built their camera. So it was a Lytro camera. And uh, after having this camera for like a year and a half or two years, they did a firmware update and all of a sudden it was Wi-Fi enabled. And I'm like, wait, there's been Wi-Fi in this thing the whole time and you didn't tell us? And so uh, I'm not really worried so much about that, but I just think it's really neat that companies sit there and say, I'm going to leverage what's in the cameras to use other features and not just put in the new cameras, but to say, how can we make the old cameras more viable? And so that's good for GoPro. Uh, it's an interesting one because, again, uh, they're announcing features they've added into cameras you already own. Pretty neat. All right, what else do we got? Um, uh, in Gagely, <laughs> in, in hopes to improve remote teaching. Um, oh, my God. The, the, I, I am a, I'm an educator. So I have lots of hats that I wear, and one of them is an educator. And uh, I, I do not know about this. I, I was asked what I know about this type of tech. And what worries me about most of this type of tech isn't the tech itself. It's who is your customer. So, and this is just sort of a general thing. If you're looking at educational technology, you need to ask the question, who's the customer? The customer is not the student. The customer is not the teacher. The customer is not the parent. The customer is the school board. It's the school system. It's the school district that is buying these things and putting them in place. So whenever I evaluate tech, and I haven't evaluated this one, whenever I evaluate tech, I always go, who are they selling to? So if they're selling to an enterprise solution, then they understand who their market is. The same thing goes when I'm looking at toys. When I'm looking at sort of these smart toys for children, who are you selling to? If you're selling to the parent, you got it right. Because the parent's going to be buying the toys for the kid. It's great that the kid is is you know wants the toy, but at the end of the day, when you see some of these very expensive products, let's go back up to that segue, right? My, will my kid want a segue? Of course they'll want a segue, but don't sell to them, sell to me. And it reminds me when the Furby uh, came out, the new Furby Booms came out a few years ago, the, the, the fancy Furbies, there was a review I had read, and I wish I had the exact quote, and it was like, will your kid love this? And the answer is yes, but they'd also love a crack bucket full of sugar. It doesn't mean we're going to give it to them. So I think it's really important to look at these things. Uh, and also, I always get weirded out because right now, EdTech is more of a bandwagon the item, and everyone thinks they're an educator, and I have a degree in education. And the first thing I ask when I look at these things is, do these people, you know, are they are they really educators? Do they know what they're talking about? Or are they just trying to solve a problem uh, that they perceive with solutions that they've come out of nowhere? And remember, that's not how these things work. A cardiac monitoring device that can track si seven uh, biometrics at home. You know, the older I get, the more I'm interested in this, like, please, I don't want to die uh, sort of technology. Again, whenever I see the finger things, I get a little worried. Make sure that it works. Um, okay, they, they cleared one of the, the FDA cleared one of them. That's good. Um, all right, so they can do, ooh, this is pretty cool. All right, seven lead e ECG can monitor blood pressure, respiratory rate, lung sounds, heart sounds, heart rate. Pretty cool. I, I like this. I like this type of tech. So, yeah, I, I'll, I'll learn more about it. But then the question is, is it for me or is it for me and my doctor? And that's also one of those things that comes along with some of these technologies. If it's just like, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. There's a lot of tech that does that. But I want to know what happens if I'm not fine and what, where that comes into play. Ordinary wearables may soon track blood pressure. All right. We, we, we talked about that. All right. Um, Cadillac self-driving party van concept. Concept. I love auto shows. I don't do, by the way, I don't do car tech. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I am not the car tech guy. I like to be, be honest with you. That's like my thing. And one of the reasons I'm not the car tech guy is because of the word concept. Concept cars are cool. Concept cars are fun. Uh, but you know this is not real. Like if you go back 20, 30 years, concept cars don't turn into real cars. Concept cars inspire things that happen next line along the way. So concept cars are cool, but it's... Um, you have to really have a real vision for what that really means. Find the right lipstick hue for you. Mm. Um, all right, what do we got here? L'Oreal has a, a beauty customization. All right, Yves Saint Laurent. All right, pop in your color cartridge, pick a shade, and apply using the included applicator. So what's interesting with a lot of these custom devices is... You really have to ask yourself, 
do you have one shade of lipstick? And I'm using lipstick because that's the example here. Do you have one shade of lipstick because an app hasn't told you uh, that it's the right time of day for a different shade of lipstick? Do you have one shade of lipstick because you don't like carrying around three shades of lipstick? Or do you have one shade of lipstick because, damn it, this is the one that looks good on you? And I think a lot of times they're, they're introducing a level of customization that may or may not actually be market needed. Now, I'm not going to deny that a smart app to help me determine which is the right shade of lipstick is brilliant. Maybe even tell me which shades of lipstick is useful is brilliant. But the problem with that is, is that's just a one-time app, right? I go in, the, the stylist says, these are the colors that are good for you, and I leave. And that's great, but it's not a good marketing pro pro uh, process for them. So they come up with all these other things. So I'm, I'm always extra skeptical about things where they try to customize things that only need to be customized once. Uh, the example I also use is with Dr. Scholl's, right? I use, every time I go to the, the, the CVS, I stand on the machine and it tells me to get the same damn arc support because my arcs haven't changed. And I'm, gra I'm grateful because the arc support is the one I need. I like getting tested. I, I paid my 50 bucks for those art supports. They are wonderful, but I'm not varying enough that if they said Dr. Scholes was like, we want to subscribe you to a testing service, I'd go, why? So I look at that a little bit skeptically, and obviously it's expensive, but also obviously it's not for me. Uh, and I don't mean because I don't wear lipstick. I mean, it's not for me because I'm not in that sort of, you know, fancy range. But I'm sure someone's going to go, yeah, I need this. Can a vibrating headband help you reduce stress? Ooh. Ooh, brain-altering headbands aren't new. No, they're not. We've seen a lot of the brain-altering headbands. Uh, so this one, you wear 20 minutes a day. Beta waves, increase the alpha waves. Um, wow, four ninety dollars All right, that's expensive. So there's a lot of these, these devices out there that are doing lots of things with retraining, you know, their biofeedback where they, they hear your brain waves, they try to program your brain waves, they do a lot of things like that. And some of these things are cool, but you really have to dedicate to doing that. And I, I want to say like this, if you're going to dedicate to wear a device for 20 minutes a day to alter your brain waves, you also could dedicate 20 minutes a day to meditation. And so, again, think about the social engineering. Now, I will tell you that last year, and I, I, I've got a video on this, I tried one where I clamped it to my ear, and they tuned it up, and it felt like I was, like, drugged. And I went to take it off. He's like, no, you have to wear it for 20 minutes. It's a therapeutic thing, and it really is a $1,000 device. And when I was done, it ruined the next hour of my life because it totally mellowed me out. And I'm doing Mr. Hey, everybody, and I couldn't do it. I was like, oof. I mean, it had oof, taken me out. And that's great because there was no drugs involved and it was really, really cool, but also it was like $1,000 and it was designed for medical people. So all of these things, as again, as a concept, I'm not speaking to this specific product. And notice, by the way, I'm speaking more to the trends here than I am to the product. Uh, but again, the trend is also $500. It's a lot of money. Electric cars covered in solar panels. Cool. Next. <laughs> Sorry. I am so angry at this company. Uh, Ninu sent me so much email that I read their press release and then I watched their video and then I read their press release. I don't know what the hell they do. Their, their perfume has an app. Uh, I don't know why it has an app. Uh, it makes their fragrance smarter. I don't know. Is it mixing the fragrance? Is it putting out more or less? It learns your preferences over time. It, literally no, even here, I'm reading this. There, are, there. Are, they've got one for men and one for women. Uh, they've got green packaging, but it doesn't tell me anything about why it needs to be smart. What is it doing for me? It's vegan. That's great. It holds uh, three three vegan scents in recyclable vials. Uh, it tweaks the scents based on their mood. How and why and what does it actually mean? None of it's explained here. So basically what I'm getting is is a uh, really cool, smart aerosol container that's, you know, obviously sustainable or recyclable or whatever. It's got um, a glowing light on it. That was a big deal is that it was illuminated. And it can mix scents. Uh, but again, to what end, I have no idea. I was like, oh my goodness, my mood has changed. How, why? This one just pit. And today they sent me an email going, look at all the press coverage we have. You know what? Yes, you have a lot of press coverage, but I, I don't know if they're laughing with you or at you. If you know what I'm saying? All right. Your uh, your little kids don't need a screen with a Scoob Cube. I didn't. I missed this one. Um, so there's a lot of of cool kid tech, and I can be really harsh on kid tech, but some of the stuff's been pretty fun. 
This one, the Scoob Cube. All right, so this was originally started to help children with disabilities express them through music. Uh, it's a sensory cube that doesn't require a screen. That's pretty cool. All right, I would I would have to check this one out. I would have to check this one out. This one looks pretty cool. A uh, water security system. I, I mentioned this. I'm a big fan of this as well. So a few years ago, there's a big trend in reminding everybody that your coffee pot is drawing electricity even when it's off. And so they're testing all these appliances or people unplug these appliances. They're demanding that appliances not draw power because of that. And so now we're seeing the same thing, but obviously not with other devices, but with water. So the idea being is, is can you see if there's water being flow, flowing, and if there's water flowing, that means uh, maybe there's something going on and uh, some of the other things that are going on as well. So thinking about uh, water security is actually a, a big deal. I love smart plumbing. I mentioned it in my other videos. L'Oreal wants to help you save water. How? Um, okay, it's a focused shower head. All right, next. Air pop masks, smart mask monitors local air quality. All right, so this is actually pre-pandemic. Uh, there was, I, I think I saw this one. Pre-pandemic, there was this idea about wearing a mask for, you know, other things than a pandemic. And so now it's just kind of more interesting that the companies that were already making masks are like, whoo, surprise, we're in a good business to be in. Uh, but basically being able to understand what kind of environment you're in and having the, the monitor is pretty good. Again, I think there, there's there's other things you can look at. A Keurig style. Oh my God, when are we gonna stop using the words Keurig as a as a? And I don't know Wired. You have to. I'm not complaining about Wired. But they're like we're the Keurig of, we're the Netflix of, we're the you know, uh, Keurig style ice cream machine. I, I definitely would want one. I'm gonna start right off the bat and say I I I, I want this already. Um, I can I can rag all, all I want about uh, of this, but if they're a little things that you plug in and get cold ice cream treats that's pretty cool um but you know it's big you know you you're you're signing up for their their um you're signing up for obviously their particular cartridges and then lastly almost everybody's trying to be so healthy these days and i'm allergic to most artificial sweeteners so half the time i go to do one of these things i can't do anything so there you go um this one i'm upset by um razor made a crazy gaming chair and a face mask I don't understand why they made a face mask. Their, their, their face mask is clear plastic, which of course you can't breathe through. So they had to put in a vent, which we know generally we try to avoid the vented face mask. That's why we do the other types of things. Um, they put an RGB lighting system and they put in a voice amplifier. And I said this to my producer, if I saw this, if I saw someone walking by with this, I would go, uh, that's get away from me. Uh, this is not a friendly uh, environment uh, for face masks. Uh, so there you go. And then the other is, is they did this uh, really cool. Um, oh, he wants one. Oh, good for you. Whoever wrote this article, um, you want the mask? I, I'm, I'm upset by the mask. So there you go. I, I'm, I'm pissed off by it. The other one is, is they have this crazy like 360 sort of screen desk that's a prototype. And I'm like, yeah, I'll see it when I see it. So there you go. Bowflex offers up some Peloton competition. Uh, next. I, I shouldn't even have to say that. Like, this isn't even surprising. If I were to say, uh, did you know that Bowflex is doing something to compete with Peloton? You'd be like, yeah. So, yeah. All right, next. Kim is making electric delivery vehicles. Next. Lenovo still loves e-ink. Now, this is interesting. This is interesting. I e-ink is bizarre. E-ink is, of course, if you're used to thinking about uh, that really uh, matte black and white thing that you saw on the on the original Kindle uh, Kindles. Um, the fact that they're actually putting it in a tablet um, is is amazing. Um, that that's uh, they're putting it on on the lid, an e-ink display on the lid. This is just bizarre. I'm actually upset that I missed this one because I would sit here and go. The first thing I would do is I would say like I would scoff at it, and then I would go, wait a second. This is not just engineering for engineering things. I bet you there's something there's something out there. So it's a ThinkBook Plus 2. I will have to rethink about this. This one's going to make me start thinking about what I would do with it. And I'm actually a big um, I use a the I use a, a a regular I use a I use a what's it called a Microsoft ThinkBook. So I I I yeah. No, I use a Surface Book. So I'm interested in this. I'm curious about this. Dell's got a 40-inch widescreen monitor. Cool. Next. Um uh, uh, Kohler's stillness bath. Ooh, 
Ooh, a bathtub designed for expressing for expressly for the purpose of making every tense stressed out gadget writer sulk simmering in thwarted desire. Okay, you, you, you're good on this. The problem with this is as follows. Every one of these people who are being sold about these giant crazy bathtubs and these or these twelve thousand dollar toilets and don't get me wrong i want one you want one everyone at wired wants one but nobody has one we're responding to the hype because i don't know about you but I, they're not sending me one to go you know what if you evaluate this and give us a write-up and and i'm not willing to spend sixteen thousand dollars on a risk and that's the thing about this these are luxury items for people who are used to luxury items. So if I'm gonna spend 16, and I, I wanna put this in context, if I'm gonna spend $16,000 on a, on a bathtub, that means I'm probably already in the market for a $12,000 bathtub, which means I don't have to go like, is this the greatest thing? I have to go, how does it compare to that $12,000 bathtub? Which means I'm already well out of their marketplace. So cool, I'd love to sit in one, I'd love to try one, but it's just a dream. All right, Stern Pinball shows Led Zeppelin a whole lot of love. Every year, Stern comes out with a new pinball machine. Pinball's a thing. They spend a lot of money on it. It's branded Led Zeppelin. That's awesome. Uh, I'm not going to buy one. I hope to see one at the arcade. I'm not going to do an arcade. Next. All right, a heads up for drivers. Heads up displays are cool. Um, and what they're saying is, is that this one's got a lot of info on it. That's neat. That's neat. But what's neater is, is the trends of heads-up displays. The more heads-up displays we have, the better. The more you're driving down the road and the information that you need to see that you would look down for, you're looking up for, the better. Now I've got to make sure that you're used to seeing it there so that you don't kill anybody. I love the fact that it's showing you that. Oh, that's pretty cool stuff. That's pretty cool. I'll be honest with you. I'd love to see more information about that. Again, will I get one? Probably not right away. So that's way down the road. This is more of, a, of an aspirational tech as we look at it. All right, how are we doing? About halfway through? About halfway through, okay. Um, all right, I saw this, I think I saw this last year, uh, the matcha tea machine. Uh, I'm not a matcha, I'm not a matcha drinker. Um, I, I think it's cool that they actually have something that knows how to do it just right, and they've got it in little bags, and it's a machine. But you're pretty much buying into them, right? You're buying into them. It's not a Mr. Coffee where you can put any coffee in it. You're literally putting in their matcha in their machine. So it's sort of like, yeah, I believe in you. Think about that. When was the last time you looked at a company and said, yeah, I believe in you? And at first you have to believe in matcha. Then you have to believe in you. Now, the nice part, of course, is is that they they, they, they give samples out last year. And they let you, they let you do it. And, the, yeah, I, I reviewed this one last year, and it's pretty cool. Um, but, of course, it's $369. That's a big jump. Like, that's a big, you know, that's a lot of money for, a, I've never really done this. All right, what is this camera? Panasonic, okay, Panasonic's got a new uh, camera back. That's cool. That's cool. Um, uh, Flex IO sensors let you keep an eye on nearly everything. All right, I don't know what that is. Security sensors, no need for hub or Wi-Fi, it's weatherproof. All right, sensors, keep going. OtterBox is getting into the gaming accessories. All right, Otter, that's that. This is good news. So if you are a, if you care about your technology and you really like a good a good case, you're gonna buy an OtterBox. I am an OtterBox fan user. I use a lot of OtterBoxes. That's awesome. Uh, so now they're starting to make stuff for other devices. That's cool. They're pretty much indestructible, and they're not cheap. Uh, HP's latest two-in-one laptop is ARM-based and definitely not leather. Next, HP's got a new uh, uh, thing. Oh, 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 is that it? Oh, sorry. Keep, was, was that the end of it? No, it's an advertisement. All right, keep going. That was HP for an incredibly precise high. Okay, now it's time for the pot tech. Now, I'm actually not a prude, by the way. Um, I, I'm, I actually have an, alert, an allergy to pot, so I, I, I do not get to partake. But I'm not a prude. I just don't. I just don't want secondhand smoke. So any of these cool techs, I'm actually cool with as long as it keeps things away from me. Um, there are so many cool things about the the pot tech industry, but it's almost exactly like the other stuff. You're really in getting involved with one company in one way. It's all again. It's the everyone's taken the you know uh, give away the razor, sell the blades, a little too literally. And you have to sit here and go, like, I, I, I have to trust you first. So um, it's cool that you can do this, and uh, there you go. But I'm going to keep going.
uh, C by G E renames itself Sync uh, makes more smart home stuff. I it's a it's another smart company. I, I'm I'm saying it's another smart company. If you do the smart home tech, and I do a lot of smart home tech, you're gonna go like there are so many brands. And for me, I'm very clever when it comes to this. When I look at the the smart home tech, I'm not trying to all stay with one brand. I want to make sure that everything is compatible with each other. So I don't mind the fact that there's like eight different. Uh, base applications on my phone that my garage is using one type of, of app and my other is using another type of app as long as everything goes into my Amazon account and I can have she who will not be named control them all I'm pretty good um, so there's another another smart company out there great next a fully stocked soundbar who's it by uh, it's got a all right JBL bounces audio around the room that's cool that's cool uh, Bluetooth shower speakers powered by water. All right, this is pretty awesome. I'm I'm always cynical about any sort of water tech. I love good water tech, but again, where's the power coming from? Is it battery powered? Do you have to plug it in? Am I going to electrocute myself in the tub? So the fact that they're actually using a little generator in there to, to shower it, to, to power it, that's just clever. I like clever. Um, uh, I just like clever. There you go. This fridge makes ice spheres awesome i mean i don't have to go by the headline all right they're lg makes ice spheres cool um <laughs> that, that's cool uh next samsung wants to fill your home with robots all hail our robot overlords um i i okay i again let's go on acer sticks by its chromebooks fine next exciting um bio milk's lab grown human milk is tailored to your baby what what um what all right biomilk collects a woman's mammillary epithelial cells cultivates them and then grows milk what all right what <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm gobsmacked here let's keep going uh like to run in the dark these earbuds reflect light Pff, i mean some of these things all right uh another no noise canceling headphones Wow, I've never heard of those before. No, I'm not saying that's as a rude thing, by the way. What ends up happening is, is that you're dealing with the subtleties of tech now, right? There are noise canceling headphones. Uh, v Moda makes headphones. V Moda makes noise canceling headphones. That's a big deal, but it isn't about like a game changer. It's about like a market shift. Mm, keep going, keep going. Uh, the Snap On phone stand is so stinking cute. All right, I I'll give you that's cute. Um, I have gone through so many accessories in my life that I would need to have one of these. So uh, Moft or Mobile Office for Travelers, if, for me to actually give any sort of legitimate feedback, I wouldn't even be able to just touch it. I would need to touch it. I would need to use it. I have stacks. I come back from CES every year, except for this year because there is no CES, with stacks of cases. Everybody in the world will give you the case. And then you're like, what am I going to stick with? And it's so funny because often it's, it's my outer box. And by the way, I paid for this one. This isn't a, a, an endorsed type item. But there are times where I'm like, I'll try all these devices. And I'll, I literally will come home with 10 or 15 cases for my phone and then go, oh, look at that. I, I, want, my, I want my other one back. Uh, so I'll be interested. I would say this looks cool. I would need to touch it. A rollable computer chessboard. <laughs> the, the, the chessboard thing I find fascinating. We've been doing chess now for forever. Like computerized chess, this, that, and the other. I mean, you can play chess on an app. And I like the material culture thing. I like the idea that people are saying, like, yes, you can play chess on a computer. And yes, you can play chess on an app. But you know what? Chess is a material culture. Chess is about touching things. We need a chess board. And, of course, there's a smart one there. Um, there's also, also some cool things because they move them around. Um, the automated chess boards are really pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Um, LG's got OLED, OLED TVs that are bright. Um, they've got that's cool. They've got a trans, there's someone's got a transparent one. Uh, recharge your face mask. All right, I'm ready for this one. What are they doing now? Um, what are they doing now? What are they doing now? It's okay, so it's a face mask. All right, good. Um, built in microphone and attached earbuds. Uh, okay. Yeah, this possibly over-engineered mask. Done, done. All right, uh, Qualcomm fingerprint sensors. That's cool. 
that's more business to business. You'll see these types of tech in the future. Let's keep going. All screen dashboard. Wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, I can't afford that, but that's pretty cool. All screen dashboard, real again, car tech. Philips is all in on teeth and sleep. Teledentistry? Hmm. Sleep apnea. I have sleep apnea, so some of the stuff is cool. Cobalt free batteries are coming. Next. Belkin's Lynx's home is on Wi Fi 6E. Next. Uh, what the heck is Wi-Fi 6E, right? Exactly. That's the next thing you were going to say. All right. Lenovo is a cheap new Android tablet. That's cool. Um, TCL continues to push into mobile. Oh, yeah, that, okay. Let, let's, let's take a look at this real fast. The rollable phone. Um, the curved screen, the rolling screen, this is really the wave of the future. Um, we're not here yet. But we are starting to look at what the future might look like if these things get horribly reliable. Um, we're not there yet, but this is the kind of cool things. This is why you come to CES, is to go, did you see the screen that curved? You're like, yeah. Did you get one? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Targus has the Medenic in mind with its latest gear. Targus makes cool stuff. Um, there you go. LG releases a rollable phone. Uh, All right. That's cool. So they've got a rollable smartphone. There you go. Um, they've got a 8K display. Jesus, 8K display. I actually can go through the math on why an 8K display doesn't matter. Because um, it turns out there's a whole thing. I had a whole website on this about visual acuity and, and, and the dot patterns and things like that. So at, at, at 4K, we are going crazy. At 8K, there's a, there's like a size trade-off with like literally the size of the cones in, in your eye, where at some point we do hit off. Now, there's a reason to buy an 8K camera, because it allows you to crop and do other sorts of things. But at some point, we do literally hit the threshold of human perception when it comes to the actual size of the pixels. I'm not talking about color depth. I'm not talking about contrast depth. We can keep improving there. But 8K screens are ridiculous, and I can prove it to you. Uh, but the other parts of them that make it cool are cool. But really, 8K, we really don't see them. All right. Motorola, we, we do see 4K, by the way. 4K, I think we're going to top out of 4K. Motorola refreshes affordable phones. Keep going. Laura DiCarlo. I met Laura last year. She was amazing. Their entire company is awesome. Now they're, and again, uh, we don't call them sex toys. They are, uh, they are sexual wellness devices. Uh, they're heated. That's cool. Um, and what's cool about it is it's not heated because you want your, you don't want your hands to be cold. It's heated because at some point in their research, they found that heated is necessary. And that's the thing is when you're looking at these sexual wellness companies, you want to follow the ones who are like, what do we need? Not, Hey, what can we do? That's what engineers do. All right. Car code bloat. Next. This app lets you scan your skin for trouble areas. Again. With this types of thing here, that's really, really cool. But I would ask, is there is there not an app, but is there a dermatologist involved? Um, okay, it isn't meant for placement of a dermatologist. Um, all right, cool. And, of course, that's the, and the company's HIPAA compliant. So I'll be honest with you, I'm cool about this type of stuff. Um, I would ask you, the viewer, have you ever gone to your dermatologist and asked for a full scan? Uh, and I've done that. I was at my dermatologist to get something taken care of. And I'm like, can I get a full scan? He's like, no one ever asks for the full scan. But it's important to do. Um, that's neat. Uh, there you go. Um, next. Fossil has new smartwatches, sort of. I don't even want to know. All right. Uh, smart home line, North America. Care about that. Uh, all right. I was a skeptic. And then I was a con convert. And now I'm a skeptic again. Uh, so there is this TypeWise app. You can download it and install it to your phone for free. Apparently, there's a pro version, which you can pay like $10 a year or $30 for like a lifetime membership of it that in theory uses a hexagon grid, changes the way you look at the world, larger, easier, smarter. And I was like, come on. And I, I went, I literally downloaded it yesterday. I'm still adapting to it. Um, so I've gone back and forth because I made some mistakes with it. But it, it I adapted pretty fast. Like, it's pretty, pretty cool. So I have to say that this is one that I will check out. Again, I don't know if I want to buy into TypeWise as my default keyboard, uh, but I think it's definitely worth looking into. So good on you. Mini LED takeover begins. Um, not there yet. Um, make workouts safer and louder. 
What does that mean? Um, so they come in, fifty accessories, small types of speakers, they wrap around any pair of glasses. All right, so that makes them louder. How does it make them safer? Oh, because you're not having the, they're, they're, they're not in your ears. Basically, the idea being is you have speakers, but you don't have things inside of your ears. Because the reality of it is, is that when you're, when you're truly wearing over-the-ear headphones or inner headphones, you're isolated. Isolation is dangerous, which is why we try to use other types of tech. Go Sun. Go Sun is an awesome company. I've met the owners of this company. They're really, really cool. Uh, they're Ohio based and they're making a solar powered purifier that lets you shower off the grid. They also make a solar powered table and a solar powered cooker. They're a cool company. I like them. Oh, that was the end. So, this is me giving my take on Wired Magazine. You'll notice I skipped over certain things, which are sort of just like, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm sure there's more out there. I love reviewing tech. I love being a, a, te a tech skeptic, or what we call an industry analyst. So if you have any questions, uh, if you want to see me go through, oh my God, so many more of these things. If you haven't checked out my other episodes, I have 10 episodes. They're about 45 minutes a piece. Don't watch them all in one time. Uh, in each episode, I probably go through ooh, probably 10 different products. I really rag on their videos. And I would say I probably find four or five interesting products along the way. I'd like to thank again Wired Magazine for giving me something to overly curate because my producer saw it. And I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you do like my videos, uh, please like, subscribe, share, comment, all the type of good stuff. If you have any questions for me, send it off. If you want me to review your tech, if you really want me to look at your tech, uh, contact me. I am happy to run it through the motions. If you watch my videos, you will know that I am I'm an honest reviewer. I can be sarcastic, I can be silly, uh, but I will give you the runaround. The bad news is, everybody who sends me stuff, it's the stuff I don't want. <laughs> it's the stuff where I'm like, take it back, I don't need it. Every so often I find stuff that I'm in love with, and um, so I go for the risk. If you are in... If you, by the way, if you have any of the food tech, I actually, I, I maybe have been really harsh on all of those, you know, you know, you got to buy into their type of technologies. And I'm harsh on it because there's no way for me to really know that I love it until I fall in love with it. So any of those that want to send me stuff, I would love to play with those as well. I know I'm shilling pretty hard, but that's what we do. Now, in all seriousness, my name is Jared Bendis. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. And again, if this is episode 11 for you, God bless. If this is episode one, I got 10 more episodes. Have fun. Talk to you later and goodbye.